All right, so what we're talking about is if we shift our weight and our body goes with it, and the farther we go, the more we spread our legs. We don't want to go a long ways and only go to there because then we're going to end up swinging like this. We want to be able to, as far as we need to go, we need to shift that far. And if we commit with our body weight, like throwing, we commit with our body first. If we shift and commit with your body first, then you can continue. In the middle of your shift, all of a sudden the ball's not there. So what do you do? You just keep falling. Well, when you keep falling, if you put your foot down too early, you're going to end up like this. If you keep falling and you're trying to let it get to you, it's still not getting to you. You just keep falling until you can reach as far as you can. You end up getting lower. But do you see how I've reached out to find the middle? But in that split second, when I was swinging, my weight was shifted against my front side, almost like the back of a truck is filled up with a, like a, a kiddie pool. It's got a couple inches of water in it. It's going three miles an hour, about the speed of your weight shift, about three miles an hour. And right when you stop the car, the truck going three miles an hour, you stop it. What's going to happen to all that water? Well, because it's so shallow, it's, you're going to really be able to see it swishing up. So even though the car has stopped, the truck has stopped, the weight is temporarily spiking forward. So when you're shifting, that weight is spiking forward for that split second and then return it. Now there's no weight going anywhere. Okay? So it's a very short amount of time. And, and so reaching to find the middle is just however far you commit, you reach to find the middle. So if I only commit to there, that's all I gotta do. And swing. If I have to go farther, I reach farther. That's what good hitters do. And that's why you see guys get down on their knee when they hit it. Now it's actually, they don't actually do that. They're actually, they may feel that, they may associate and eventually getting on their knee with hitting the home run with the, with the curveball. But what happens is, is they land deep, farther and deeper, which gives the ball more time to get here. And when they swing, they're, they're shifting when they swing because they're in movement, it's dynamic. And they return. And they return enough to hold their posture. Because if you did return, this leg would be passive and you'd fall, you'd fall back. But what do they do? They don't do that. They go here and they fall straight down. That means for a split second, they maybe their knee was off the ground an inch, and I have plenty of videos like that to, to prove it, which I can show some of them. For the lack of, a, of having it available right now, that's all that means. You just stride, reach to find the middle, but you're still getting your weight in the ball. It's dynamic, and the, there's only a split second when that weight is going against your front side. Just like you're spiking a scale, like the spring scales. But as fast as it spikes with energy, it's going to dissipate energy just as fast. So you got, so it's time sensitive. So you got to hit the ball right when it's spiking. Even if you're not moving, even if it looks like you're not actually moving, because you've stopped, you've stopped that water still rushing up against the back of that bed of that truck, or the back of the cab of that truck, and transferring into or up through your body in through the bat into the ball. Now another thing that this weight shift does, this weight shift turns your core ballistic. Because if I just go slow and smooth, my core is gonna be strong and powerful. But if I add a weight shift, it's like doing a layup. If, I, if I'm gonna run and I just go slow and I jump, I'm gonna go pretty high. But if I run harder and I get a nice little spring off it, you know, I don't wanna bend my knee a lot, but I, it's just get that spring, that bounce off, it's, a ballistic move. We'll say with hitting, you get the ballistic land. When you land ballistically, boom, then all of a sudden everything explodes. And you you not only get that weight dynamically into the ball, but it, 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 it turns your core ballistic, your core motor, which is your upper body. Also, another effect of committing to your weight shift, it secures, it secures your your lower body. Sideways, your lower body stays actually sideways. Let me give you an example. If that's hard to understand, watch. If I, now, I'm gonna do this by exaggeration because exaggeration is always a good, good way to express it. If I leaned over this much and I stride in and swung, there's no way I could open up. There's no way I could pull off. 
And that's why what good hitters do is they, you know, they, they may start out balanced, but they're a little bit over. So when they land, they're on the ball. They can't pull up. And then you add a weight shift. Look, if I, if I had a little weight shift and I quit and I, and I stopped my transfer, I'd get stuck. But if I keep unloading my backside, my core and shoulders are able to rotate fully. But then my weight's going to return back just as fast. It's going to go transfer, transfer, contact, return. It can't go transfer, contact, weak, back, leg. It can't do that. Because if I go transfer, contact, weak, back, leg, then if the ball, let's say it's eight inches further than I thought, well, I'm going to do that. Okay, so it's not going to work. 